Hey everyone, this is my 2003 Honda Element that I've been living out of full time since February of 2016. I've made a lot of changes to the camper conversion inside though during that time and I wanted to show you guys an updated tour video. This video corresponds with an article on my website elementvanlife.com and that article talks a little bit about the details and how I put everything together with the camper conversion. It also provides some links to some of the products that I use in building it out. Without further ado, let's take an updated look at my 35 square foot house on wheels. To this point, I really haven't made too many changes to the exterior of the element. It pretty much looks like it did when it came off the assembly line back in 2003. The only changes that I've made are to the roof. I added an OEM style roof rack, which I've had since the beginning, and I used that to secure my surfboard along with a 100 watt Renogy rigid solar panel. I built this metal style roof rack thing with stuff that I bought from Home Depot and put it together with some nuts and bolts and have secured it on there. As some of you guys may know who have been following along, I've definitely had my share of issues with solar in the past, but the 100 watt rigid panel seems to be more sturdy. It's definitely more efficient than the old bendable panels that I was using, and it's working out really well so far. So let's take a look inside. The first thing that you'll notice is the cabinet system. That really hasn't changed much since I started this whole journey. I do use it to store things a little bit differently though. For one, on the left, I'm not really using the closet space anymore to store hanging clothes. I use it now to keep my sleeping bag and some towels and sweatshirts and my electric fan in there as well so that I can access it easily during the night if it gets too warm. In the cabinet itself, on the first shelf, I bought this little plastic bin which I use to store all of my cooking supplies so my propane my plates bowls pots pans above that I keep my food just some snacks and other food basically bread and you can see some cheese it's there and a few other things as well or what I have in there now on top of that on the top shelf I still have that little bin with various toiletries and medicine and whatnot and I also keep my toiletries bag and my electric razor up there as well Mounted to the side of the cabinet, I've got my paper towel holder. Below that, you can see my carbon monoxide detector. Contrary to popular belief, it is not a thermostat, although that would be pretty cool if it was. And then below that, you can see that I made some changes to the sink setup. I used to have a little pump action sink, a little faucet in there, but instead, I've now run my shower head up through there, and instead of having a gray water tank, I decided to do away with that altogether. Really, the only thing that I use the sink for is to brush my teeth. So so it didn't really make sense to be accumulating gray water, which was basically a combination of toothpaste and, and water. It was getting kind of gross and moldy and smelly, so I decided to do away with it altogether. And I'm happy that I did. It's, it's easy now. I can just use the mixing bowl, which I've sealed off at the bottom to brush my teeth and then empty it out in the morning. Next to the sink area is my fridge. It's a 12 volt compressor fridge, Dometic CF18. I've had it for two years now and I've absolutely loved it. It's the perfect size for me while I'm on the road. It's incredibly efficient and it's probably my favorite thing that I own in here. On top of the fridge, I've added an extended counter space that is secured using industrial strength Velcro to the top of the fridge. And I use that for cooking inside the element. Obviously, I prefer to cook outside there's better ventilation and it's just more enjoyable to be cooking on the lift gate but if I need to if it's dark or raining or cold out I can cook inside the element as well now I use the area underneath the bed for storage I'll keep my laptop bag on the right there and then I have my 35 liter backpack I got rid of the old suitcase that I was using beforehand and now I can store all of my clothes in this 35 liter backpack I've been able to downsize so that I can fit everything in there next to the backpack you'll see that I've upgraded to a 100 amp hour AGM battery that is the core of my solar system it keeps my fridge running 24 7 and I can also use it to charge up various electronics and run my electric fan at night if I need to. Next to it, you can see the Renogy Wanderer charge controller that I have. This charge controller has also been really great so far and works well with the rigid solar panel that I have on the roof. 
To this day, I'm still not running an inverter. The system is entirely 12 volt. My fridge has a 12 volt cigarette style adapter that I use to plug it in. And then I've also got special adapters to charge my laptop, my drone battery, and all my camera batteries as well. I do try to keep the cockpit area looking as normal as possible. I won't let things accumulate up there. I use the space underneath the dash near the passenger seat to store my dirty laundry, but otherwise it's pretty clear at all times. A lot of folks will ask why I don't get rid of the passenger seat altogether. For me, I really value having that passenger seat. I like being able to drive other people around, so it's just not worth it to get rid of it in exchange for the small amount of extra space that it would provide. Taking a look from the other side, we can get a better view of the new portable shower system that I have. I got this from a company called Big Kahuna. It's the smaller system that they offer. It holds somewhere just over four gallons of water, and it has a 12 volt pump inside, which is very efficient and surprisingly powerful. It's great for rinsing off my feet after surfing, or even taking a quick shower while I'm out camping and don't have access to a Planet Fitness if I'm in the middle of nowhere. It's also really good for rinsing off dishes after I finish cooking. Taking a look from the back, we can get a better view of some of the storage space that I have underneath the bed. I try to keep things as organized as I can under there. On the left, I've got the black bin that's still used to keep my sporting things, wetsuits, things like that. And then on the right, I have the blue bin and I'm still using that to keep random electronics. And I also keep like tools in there, things that I don't necessarily need every day, but that I might need at some point in the future and that are nice to have. Not a whole lot has changed to the bed mode since I started this journey. I definitely have perfected the process of setting up the bed at night when it's dark and when I'm stealth camping I'm able to do it quietly and efficiently within one to two minutes and it's really easy to do. But overall I haven't really seen any reason to make changes to the bed itself. The foam mattress, the tri-fold mattress that I got on Amazon has been great. I'm really happy with it. Maybe at some point I'll add a little memory foam topper to it to make it extra comfortable but so far like I said it's it's been really awesome I've made some changes to the window covering since the last version as well I'm now using black felt on all the windows and I have velcro stuck to the edges of the windows and then the black felt attaches directly to that velcro for the two suicide door windows I also have magnets secured to the edges of the fabric using black duct tape and that really helps to keep the coverings in place with the previous version I had problems with them constantly falling down especially as they were getting older so this works a lot better and the last stop on today's tour is the updated desk mode that I built with my grandfather back in the fall it's a really secure desk. It's very comfortable. Definitely an improvement over the previous setup where I was basically just using a TV tray in the back. I have a lot more working area here. I'm able to comfortably sit and edit video for hours on end. It's designed to rest on top of the passenger door and then on the left it rests on top of the bed support for the front support of the bed which I keep in between the passenger seat and the driver's seat during the day anyways. Like I said this thing has been really awesome and I'm very happy with it. I hope you all enjoyed the updated tour video. Be sure to check out the link in the description below to my website which goes into more detail about the camper conversion and how I put it together like I said before. Thanks for watching. Also be sure to subscribe to follow along on my adventures as I continue this indefinite road trip across North America. I'll talk to you all in the next video.